What's going on everyone? Nick from Resonic Sound Solutions here with another tech tip video on the Audio Tech Fisher DSP software. In this one, I am going to show you how to set up differential rear fill, as well as how to get a little bit more out of the real center feature. Um, you know, how to manipulate settings in the input and output matrixing to get more out of that feature. Um, this is gonna be a really quick one. Someone requested it and you know, here I am making it real quick for you. Um, now this, exact option um, of what I'm going to do, or this exact setup, which, which what I'm going to do with the uh, real center is only applicable in uh, devices that have virtual channel processing products like the Helix DSP Ultra, the Pro Mark III, the V12 Mark II, V12, V8 Mark II. I think the Helix M6 and M4 have it um, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but if it has virtual channels, what I'm going to show you with the real center is going to be, you know, able to be done. Uh, differential rear fill is able to be done on any of these. So let's just hop right into it. I'm going to use a V12 Mark II as it's probably our most commonly used product. Um, I'm going to set up a little demo here. As usual, I'm going to enable virtual channels. Now, setting up differential rear fill, super, super easy. Go to our input and output matrixing, and you know we have our main to virtual or auxiliary to virtual or digital to virtual or virtual to output. I prefer to do this on virtual to output just to keep things simple. You can do it in any of these, but I prefer to do it on virtual to output. Um, now, what we're gonna do is, you know, let's say we have our rear speakers, you know, right here, rear left full and rear, uh, rear right full. Um, so now what we're gonna do, as we can see, rear left full has rear left full and rear right full has rear right full. Easy, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna drag rear right, right onto rear left and rear left, right onto rear right. We're just gonna sum uh, the two outputs, so they have both 50% left and 50% right. But then what we're going to do on the left output side, we're going to double click the right input, invert polarity on the right output, we're going to double click the left and invert polarity there. And there you have it, you have differential rear fill. To take it a step further, what people usually do on the rear differential speakers is they also delay it extra they attenuate it and they bandpass it now all of these settings that i just mentioned are going to be usually finessed by ear there is no straightforward formula to get the end result you're looking for that being said um, if you have a three-way setup i would suggest crossing them at the same frequency that you have your mid-ranges crossed at reason for this is if you just end up with no delay at least there's no um, difference in phase between rear speakers and your mid-range and mid-bass and stuff like that and you could still get appropriate summing uh, without any cancellation um, or you know it, it just you know helps keep things simple um, so setting up on the output going to the rear like let's say my mid-range is I cross at 300 with a 24 db Linkwitz Riley filter um, <clears throat> and, you know, let's say 3,500 with a 24 dB Linkwitz Riley filter. By the way, with that crossover for the rears, I was only talking about the high pass filter. I was not talking about the low pass. Low pass is kind of one you can just, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, a lot of people like to let it, you know, roll off on the top end. Uh, some people like to run it all the way up. Me, preferably, I start with it running full range, running all the way up, and then if it's too much, I just adjust it from there. So from here, uh, you know, 300 hertz we did on the mid-ranges, so we're going to do, you know, 300, 24 dB. Now, some people you're going to see online saying to use 12 dB slopes. Um, frankly, I, I haven't really notice the difference personally. Um, and if you ask those people why to use 12 dB slopes, they don't really have an answer. Uh, they don't really have a real answer. Um, but, you know, I, like I said, I just match my front mid-range 
um, crossover settings because if I have any different presets where maybe I don't use any delay or I don't use differential rear fill, I can just use the same crossover settings without any worry of cancellation from rear speakers to mid-range and mid-bass crossover. Um, and then for the top end, you know, if you want to run it all the way up, great. But a quick way to kind of knock it down up there is, you know, we can just do like a 400 hertz, 6 dB slow, you know, something like that, just to let it roll off on the top end or even 12 dB, whatever you really prefer. You could do Link with Riley, so it's a little shallower uh, or a little shallower of a roll off, not really the slope, but, you know, maybe if you use Butterworth 6 dB, if I do need to knock down the top end, that is, that's, this is what I do. I use a Butterworth 6 dB on the top if I really feel that running at full range isn't working for me. Um, and again, from here, just, you know, we just delay them. Uh, I'll put them on a pair after doing like left and right separate delays. Like say this one needs this much delay and left needs this much delay. Let's just say for, the, or, you know, this much delay for the sake of the argument. Once delay is done normally, I link them up and then just adjust them. I usually add, you know, somewhere between 12 to 15 milliseconds of extra delay. And once I'm done with that, I kind of mix, you know, I'll just move it around a little bit, see if I notice any difference and kind of just play with it from there. Again, this is going to be something you dial in by ear. Um, and then from there, again, dialing by ear is the levels. You know, you're almost always gonna need to drop levels. Um, in my cases, I find myself dropping it between five to eight decibels, sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, but yeah, usually, usually between five to eight decibels. Um, yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it. You know, once you set up the input and output uh, configuration where you're setting up the differential signal, um, you know, you will just do the rest by ear. That being said, before you set up this differential signal, it is advised that you just use the left and the right as normal to do your actual measurements and tuning. Because as soon as you, you know, cancel out that shared information, what differential rear fill is doing is it's taking left and right and you're flipping one out of polarity. And what that's doing is it's canceling all of the shared information, all of the correlated information. So you can do one of two things here either do your tuning before you do this, like your measurement and EQ before you set this up, or you can use uncorrelated pink noise because if you use correlated pink noise with this setup or you use center tracks, nothing will play because again, all shared information is canceled out. So just keep that in mind. Um, now moving on to the center. So obviously we go into our FX tab and we enable our real center. Great, we're gonna have a center extractor that you know only plays the center information out of the center virtual channel. So you can do you know whatever to create a center virtual channel. Usually it's gonna be summing left and right. You just sum left and right. The effect in you know the real center effect is going to take care of the side information and discard of it. Um, but what makes this um, this isn't technically a true up mixer. And, you know, a true up mixer is going to use different methods to sort of extract uh, information from the center. This is just a center extractor, to be fair. Um, now, what we can do to get more out of it is, you know, yeah, your center channel will now be playing center information and will be discarding the side information, but the sides will still be playing stereo. So what we can do is similar to differential rear fill where we just take our center and we can drop it onto the left and right, uh, you know, front outputs. Actually, I don't do it on the mid-bass. I only do it on mid-range and tweeter. And we can invert the polarity there and drop it, you know, let's just do 15. You don't want to do a ton. You just want to remove it a little bit, just a little bit. Um, otherwise, you're going to start noticing some very interesting uh, cancellations and it's going to start sounding very phasey. It's not going to be not going to be ideal. Um, and again, these settings here, you're going to have to play around with. But um, this is usually where I end up is doing 85 percent and minus 15 percent. So, uh, yeah. And with this setting, we are now discarding some of the center information that is being played on our left and right front speakers. And we can get 
you know, a better end result using the real center feature. Now, that being said, these settings don't mean you're done. Uh, once I do this, there are all pass filters I have to set up. There is usually some timing that needs to be done. Um, it, frankly, doing a 2C tune with the center with the center extractor is not as easy as it's made out to be. This can get you something decent, but getting something like truly good is oh, it's pretty difficult. Not gonna lie. Um, so yeah, just these settings. I'm showing you how to set it up where to set the all pass filters and you know how to actually set it up frankly i haven't done one of these setups in a while so i don't remember off the top of my head um i have my own little instructions written down somewhere in my tuning laptop at the shop um but i just i don't have that offhand and and usually it does come down to again having you know a second person sitting in that other seat and listening while I'm making adjustments to verify everything I'm doing is ending up with a good result or, you know, them telling me what they're hearing while I'm listening to what I'm hearing and, you know, going from there. But this is usually my start off point for setting up a uh, two C tune with the real center and a center channel speaker. Uh, hope that helped. And any other requests for tech tips uh, in the Audio Tech Fisher software or any sound deadening or any installation questions, feel free to make posts in the Resonix customer support group, and I will make a video for you. Uh, thanks again for the support, everyone, and have a good one.